So welcome to part two of the Heathkit HW30, the two meter single channel AM transceiver that we're now working on restoring. So Mr Chippy is here and he's got this can electrolytic which is now restuffed with four new capacitors and he's going to try and put the can back on top of it. He opened that up with a Dremel if you're, well it's a was it an Aldi or a little equivalent to the Dremel tool? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, it's that one. It's that one, is it? Yeah. That's very well. Yeah. So, uh, pop the can on. We were going to solder that with um, um, Alusol, but, which we've got, but it's in such close proximity to those capacitors, that capacitor there, that we don't want to damage the capacitor with the quite... Uh, tremendous heat needed to uh, to solder that kind of can. So what we're going to do is we've got aluminium tape that's intended really for ground planes on fiberglass vehicles things like uh, recreational vehicles and um, I suppose it'd work on those uh, Reliant Robins wouldn't they? Uh, um, as seen in only Fools and Horses and other TV shows. So that's where we are. We're going to put that back in the radio and that'll be the next bit of the video. Right, so Mr Chippy's now been putting the Octal AC mains plug together. And I'll give you the RS part number because we source these as relay sockets. I'll just see if we can zoom into that. 402715 from RS components. And uh, it weren't a lot of money, a couple of quid plus VAT. So, we don't do the plug end. What we did, we bought a three conductor American plug. And the reason I did that is so we could get the live and neutral the right way around for us. So the single pole switch is in the live along with the fuse. Uh, we're running through a transformer which has got a three conductor outlet and so we'll make sure the life and neutral is the right way around. So that's what that's all about. Now there's some links which you have to put in and what were those links Mr C? Uh, 1 to 2 and 3 to 4. Yeah. And again if I just go around to the manual there's all how to do it in the assembly manual. So there we are once again a bit further forwards. So having done that remedial work with the electrolytic capacitors having changed the four in the can and the two other ones which you saw 100 microfarads at 200 volts uh, we decided to connect it up to our step down transformer and we switch on and the valves light and no other results so if I turn the volume there's nothing we can go into transmit and although it will light up transmit there's nothing happening. So we'll see what's happening with the high tension and a little bit of fault finding. I mean, clearly we weren't sold this because it worked, were we? So that's what we have to do. So let's see what's wrong with it. Okay, so 40 minutes later, I've been going through the transmitter. I found the fault and that's now working again. So what we had, if we look at that coil just there, you can see that that's tap to that capacitor on the left and that was dry joint and although I haven't finished to receive yet I noticed that the 12 AX7 used for valve one. Oh, I don't know if we can see this. Is it going to focus? No, it's not going to focus. Can you see that pin four is bent over? So we'll carry on fault finding. Transmits now, still working on the receive. Well, after a couple of sessions of fault finding, um, 
where had we got to? Well, I've got the transmitter going because, uh, where was it? It was that, uh, that coil there. And then we were left with no received audio. The amplifier was working, which is uh, around valve two, I seem to recall that's valve two. But the valve which is used as a preamplifier and it's fed from the volume control from the receiver section, which remember is regenerative using one valve with its two sections, and there was nothing happening. Well, we also noticed on transmit there was no transmitted modulation, and that uses the same preamp uh, section. Now, section two in the valve um, is the modulator preamp, the microphone preamplifier, and the other section in that valve is the other preamplifier, which is used twice once for the audio receive and once for the modulation. What we discovered, I don't know whether I mentioned this on the video before, but the pit, one of the pins of the valve uh, was bent over. Managed to uh, bend it without snapping the thing off, but I still had no, nothing happening. So I changed the valve for another one, still nothing happening. Mr Chippy came along, he said, let's look at the voltages. So what we did, we used our uh, adapt B9A adapter, which um, cost an arm and a leg from the United States some uh, couple of years ago and this has got thicker pins and it suddenly it all burst into life so what was happening is the valve holder the heater contact for the uh, section of the valve that's used twice it wasn't a good contact so the valve wasn't lighting on that section but the other section was lighting but of course we could see the valve lighting up but of course nothing happening because the other section wasn't lighting up. So then Mr Chippy cleaned up the connections and tightened it up a bit. Jobs are good and with the original valve as we would say in Yorkshire. So that brought the received audio, brought back the transmitted uh, modulation back. So then we still had no receive. And so what we discovered... Yeah, just move the camera so we can just point to what's what that that coil there which is the white one which says 333 on it the bottom end of it had been cut slightly short and so it had easily come on solder it was just tapped on solder wise it wasn't hooked around anything and uh, mr chippy noticed that and um, he put a bit of wire around it and um, sorted it out properly but we still had no receive, and then we discovered there's a 10 meg resistor which had gone open circuit, which is that one just there. I'll just make sure that's in camera. Yes, it is. That one which is now the blue metal oxide resistor uh, from our RS pack. That will take the current of the choke if it's disconnected one end. So that's why that had gone open circuit, so we replaced that. So that's now brought receive back. And as you can hear, we've got a signal generator on here. I've got our super cheap Chinese uh, signal generator out. Let me just move the camera. And you will see that that is... Well, I'm not, I'm not square onto it, am I? So let's just move it round so it's at the same angle as the camera. And as you can see, I mean, it's a very basic signal generator, but it's uh, about 145, isn't it? And as you can hear, we've got the uh, we've got the tone there. I'll get it on our proper test set, uh, which will be off camera, and we'll just make sure. But it is a tunable receiver, but of course, it's it's really super regenerative. So. The, the selectivity is just uh, a load of rubbish, isn't it? Well, when in use, because I have every intention of using this uh, radio, what we'll actually do is we'll use it with a scanner um, on receive for anything serious. And I'll just pop the signal generator off that. There we go. I don't want to transmit up the, up the signal generator. So I'm just going to pause the video and I'll just put the scanner on. So if I transmit, there's no microphone connected. If I transmit, 
and touch the microphone hot you'll hear that being transmitted what I'll now do is I'll just dig the microphone up which I've got to did I show you earlier I've got a Pi uh, microphone from the Valve days so I'll just uh, pause the camera again so there we have a Pi Tulic mic uh, PTC4001 with a 2400 ohm insert I've put the right kind of plug on so we'll just hopefully connect that up bear in mind the PTT doesn't work through the mic it's on the radio so there we go testing one two three so there we are we've got transmit we've got receive so it's a matter of putting that back together so that wraps it up and no doubt we'll do a video in the future showing this in use now whether or not we're going to oh, we've got to wait for the crystal to come through because we're on the wrong frequency at the moment although it's a it's a frequency we could use on amateur radio on two meters um, it wouldn't be ideal because it's in a part of the band where people are expecting FM uh, so we've got a crystal on order for the center of activity for AM so there we go so thanks for watching and uh, we now have the Heathkit HW30 back in the land of the living after sorting about six faults out